Hey everyone, I have a really exciting show for you today. I have somebody on that I have been trying to get on for six or seven months. I have actually met him a couple of times, spoken with him and his partner uh, on many occasions, but now we have him. We have him for about the next 45 minutes. So let's welcome Jamil Damji to the show. How are you doing, Jamil? I'm fantastic, brother. I'm sorry it took so long for us to connect and and get the schedules working. You know, there was a lot happening uh, yeah. in the last little while, but I'm, I'm super excited to be here. I, I, you know, met you in Fresno and had a great time with you and your crew out there. You opened up your office to us and allowed us to hang out for the day. And uh, I think the world of you also exactly uh, uh, really happy to just be here with uh, your, your listeners and your audience. Yeah, Jamil, do me a favor. Let's just, just remind someone, if somebody doesn't know who you are in the real estate investing game, they're not paying attention. But maybe there's a couple of people that are new, uh, or maybe there's some buy and hold folks that don't know who Jamil is and Keegley is. Why don't you just remind people of, of who you are and Keegley is? And frankly, you guys are the number one wholesalers in the country. So, I mean, that's a legit claim. So, but, you know, why don't you say it in your own words, and then we'll go from there. Well, yeah, you know, uh, thank you for that. I'm, I'm humbled to hear that. Thank you, Michael. And, you know, we, uh, we, we definitely worked to get to this spot. Um, we are the highest volume wholesaler operation in the country that, to my knowledge, at least, um, we'll do anywhere between, you know, 65 to 85, 90 deals on a monthly basis. We just recently franchised nationwide which is super exciting for me and our group and the people that we'll be working with as business partners and franchisees. Um, all of that is great. Our focus is on disposition. So um, for those of you that are new, dispositions is the selling of the deal, right? Um, our success is 100% is predicated on the fact that wholesaling has exploded. And there are so many guys out there hustling up uh, really, really learning from key educators on how to go out and find discounted properties. And um, unfortunately, a lot of the education out there doesn't really focus on the other side of the equation, the, what produces the check, which is yeah. actually selling the deal. And um, because of that, what we found was a lot of contracts were being canceled. And when contracts get canceled, what ends up happening is it is it puts a black mark on the industry as a whole. And it's not because anyone did anything wrong. It's just because there's like a lot of emphasis on one side. And then when you don't focus on the other side of the equation, you fall short of completing, right? And so um, we saw that as a need. We saw that as a, as a massive hole in the business model. And um, the partners that I have, Josiah Grimes, Hunter Runyon, and my sister, Rahima Atari, we all got together and decided, let's plant our flag on the other side of the street and do a fantastic job of building buyers lists and that's essentially what we do, right? We're a distribution hub. Uh, I like to think of us as a wholesaler's record label, right? Um, you bring us the art and we'll get it out to the masses. And so uh, essentially we have worked with the top producers across the country. We continue to work with top producers. Top educators use us to sell their deals. So it's not that, um, you know, this this is something that is definitely needed in the in the industry and, and we're, we're lucky to be in the position and uh, we are just happy to be here. Well, first and foremost, luck had very little to do with it. So you can, th that we can strike from the record. We'll just edit that out. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I, no, you, you, saw, know, you saw an opportunity, man. You, and again, sure. go to YouTube university and I'm willing to bet 98% of the material on wholesaling is about finding the deal, the talk track with the seller, belly to belly, to belly uh, mailers, uh, calculating ARV and fair prices. It's all about that side, but that side right. doesn't produce the check. Of right? course. Right. It produces a it contract. Does. Sure. But a contract is not a check. And what you have done rightly. So genius move is you've, you've invested time, energy, and focus on building a buyer's list, which frankly, to this point, you're underselling. It takes energy to call doctors and dentists and to find out oh, who the cash sure. buyers are. And I mean, there's like just as much work on the other side. And frankly, no apps, no systems, nobody else doing it. So you're, you're blazing a trail by yourself, you and your partners, I get it. But that's the unique position you're in. And that's why you're doing, let's just say 80 deals a month, right? Some people are happy to do 80 deals a year. 
you're doing 80 deals a month because you have that side wire. Uh, and that's impressive. Is that fair? Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, um, and you're right. You know, I, I, I think I misspoke. I, I don't, I don't believe in luck. I believe in, in God, honestly. I think that God brought us all together uh, as a team and uh, has put us in a, in a position to, to have skills that each of us brought to the table that were different and those were, were like uniquely matched to fit perfectly with each other. Um, temperaments uniquely matched yeah. to fit perfectly with each other and, and goals that were uniquely matched that had the same trajectory. And um, that created a perfect storm and the perfect storm is the magic of Keegley. Yeah. And again, I think Keegley is legit. People need to check them out. If somebody wanted to check out Keegley, let's just hit it here. We'll hit it at the end. How can they follow what you're doing uh, at Keegley, follow you specifically? And again, we'll hit it again at the end, but let's hit it right now. Well, to follow Keegley, we're, uh, it's on Instagram at Keegley. It's spelled K-E-Y-G-L-E-E -E -E, at Keegley. Uh, follow me at J-D-A-M-J-I at, at J Damji. And uh, just, you know, follow us in our journey. We're constantly posting. We're sharing that, um, you know, that's become my key emphasis now is really just sharing and pouring into the community. So um, for all of you that are interested in seeing what we have going on or if you're looking for content and you know and, and you and you want somebody to shoot it to you straight without asking for a check yeah. uh I, I i i'm definitely one of those people that will do that no absolutely again folks do you do yourself a favor following what they're pulling out they're talking deals all the time right 80 transactions a month means they have plenty to pick from pick from and and they do bring it to you just how it is the good bad and the ugly so, Jamil, what I want to do now is because of the, the unique position you're in, right? You have all these wholesalers, people producing half the transaction, right? The signed contract. I'd love to hear from you. I don't know. It, well, first off, let's just ask this question. Does the business change from East Coast to West Coast or is it pretty much the same? Let's start. Um, in, in terms of uh, the meat and potatoes of the business, no. I mean, like okay. the... The actual operations of it all is, is pretty much the same legal wise and, and technicals with respect to, you know, escrow and title or escrow and title in, in some instances uh, or closing attorney, you know, there's going to be nuances market to market. And I don't know that that really uh, differs from East to West. Uh, I think it's just state to state, but there are some intricacies from state to state, but we see the same struggles the same uh, stories all across the country. In fact, uh, not even across the country, across the globe. For, uh, for anyone who watches us on Wholesale Hotline, which has become uh, you know, really fun and, and has popped off and gained a lot of viewers, uh, we brought on a guest uh, two weeks ago. It was Wholesale Hotline 13, I believe. We brought on a guest who is located in South Africa, who watched the Wholesale Hotline podcast, got inspired, got a list, started text messaging people off hours because they live on at a completely different time zone, got three deals under contract, sold all three, made 10 grand, shared his story with us. And this is all the way from across the globe. So yeah, man, like that to me, that is inspiring. You know, yeah. that, that energizes me to continue on and, and, and to keep pouring in because when I can see somebody change their financial destiny, to uplift their family and community from way over there yeah. because of something we're doing way over here or something we're saying way over here. Um, that just warms me up and it makes me feel like what I'm doing is important. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? It is. It is. <laughs> it's mind blowing. And I, I just, I wake up every day thankful yeah. and grateful to just be alive and to be able to have, uh, a, you know, a little bit of a voice in of positivity in this. Yeah, no, no question. Your voice is positivity respected. Uh, and the hustle is real. Uh, so A, when my question about East Coast, the West Coast, it really was, yes, there's little states and city nuances. But in essence, you are finding a motivated seller, you are establishing uh, a price point with what that's acceptable. And then you're signing a contract, right? Essentially, you know, at very high strokes, it's the same around the world, in essence. Yep, 100%. Right? So let's, so let's talk about what you're seeing because you probably, you, you probably see the struggle 
is, is real. And we'll talk about a couple of different points. Let's talk about the person who's living in YouTube University. Hasn't done any marketing yet, hasn't done any driving for dollars. They got the itch, they got the excitement. And let's be real, it's probably money. That's probably what got them interested. How can you help it take that person take a meaningful first step instead of signing up for somebody's $10,000 course, right? I know you don't want them to do that, but what would you tell that person to maybe do first? I think the first call to action that speaks to you, right? If you're watching YouTube University and you hear Brent Daniels talk about cold calling, um, you know what, cold call for rent by owners, right? That's a free list. Go to Zillow.com, look up rentals, that's how I got my first deal. It was a for rent by owner, right? I, I was walking for dollars. I wasn't even driving. <laughs> I didn't have a car. I was walking my dog. And so, and I made 50,000 bucks on it, right? So, so I'd say the first call to action that speaks to you is very likely the one that you'll, that, that's for you right now, right? Mm -hmm. So if cold calling makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up because it's, it's like makes you sick because it's terrible, <laughs> it's hard, don't yeah. do that, right? <laughs> don't do that. Um, send text messages. If, if, if actually doing that part of it is hard for you, then, then go to text messages. And you can go to batchleads.io, code Jamil, J-M-I-L, to get 500 free text messages for a buck. Um, actually, that's not 500 text messages for a buck, not free, 500 for a dollar. But yeah, try that out, right? Go, go download that. That's, it's a dollar, right? It's a dollar. You'll send a message to 500 people. And I can tell you that there's a good chance that someone might sell you their house in that, in, out of those 500 messages. So I think the first call to action that speaks to you, even if that's just getting up out of your bed um, or off your table and walking outside and knocking on all of the dilapidated houses in your neighborhood and, and just seeing if you can have a conversation. Whatever it is that speaks to you, go out and do. This doesn't need to be rocket science. And the ones that make it sound like rocket science are only doing that because they want your money. I'm not telling you to, to you know, come become, have me be your mentor uh, before you've done, you know, five deals or whatever that, like, we, I will help you scale and take this to the moon. But I don't want your money. I want you to change your life. And it starts off by you taking that first step. And that first step shouldn't be stroking a check. It should be some action. So call to action, get out there. Anything that speaks to your gut is what you should be doing. I, I, I mean, I ask questions. I don't know what the answer is going to be. And I got to tell you, that's probably the best answer I've ever gotten. Do what makes you feel comfortable, right? A lot of people are like, no, do what makes you uncomfortable. Get uncomfortable, move forward. Uh, growth comes from being uncomfortable, all that stuff. Well, if you're at the very beginning as we set this up, haven't done anything yet, let's give you the best chance of success and the best chance of sticking with it a little while. If, if you're the person that's cold calling, the hair goes up on the back of the neck, you're going to make four phone calls, get cussed out one time and never do it again. Be done. I, You'll be done with it. Yeah, it'll just never happen. So I just love Look, that you said that. There's a, there's a school of thought, right, that everything has to be hard and that you have to go against the grain. Yeah. And I, I don't believe in that. I do not believe in that school of thought. I believe that you are exactly where you're supposed to be at any given moment. And whether that be in a painful place or whether that be in, a, in an amazing place, it's not because of anything other than your specific positioning is meant for that, right? So if, you're, if you are doing what feels right, if you're, if you're following the, the signs and following the leads of, of your story, it should always, always be in coherence with who you are as a person. That's it. The, this, this universe, and God didn't make you unique so that you could be the same. That's it. Yeah, I think that's very, very well said. So again, I love it. Do, 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 you know, give yourself the best chance of success early, and that's by doing what is at least most comfortable, most in your wheelhouse. That may be the best advice I've ever heard someone give a wholesaler and I've never heard it before. So, I mean, we could just stop the video now. That's, that's literally the best advice I've ever heard. So awesome. awesome. congratulations. So now let's, let's step it up the next, let's say, you know, you've done one to three deals, pick whatever time frame you want, three, six, nine, 12 months. It really doesn't matter, but, but you've, you're past proof of concept, right? You're now going, Hmm, do I double down? Do I go for growth? Because when you're doing three deals, you're probably doing it all yourself, right? You don't have VAs, you don't have 
you don't really have any infrastructure. You might have an app or two, but it's just you. You know, what is that? What, how do you break this down to, you know, some people should just stay small because maybe they have a full-time job and they have a family. I don't know. Versus the person that really should pour gasoline and, and, and try to go from three to 10 or four to 12. I mean, what, do you, do you think about that at all? I absolutely do. I think that everybody's capacity is different, right? And there's going to be guys out there where three to five deals. Look, let, let's, let's be honest. Um, even if you were doing two deals a month at 10 grand a deal, which is around nation average, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's $20,000. Yeah. Right? I know doctors who don't bring that, that make, don't make 20 grand a month. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so if you're doing two deals a month and you're, and you're bringing home 20 K um, paying some ex expenses, but like, that's a really decent lifestyle. Yeah. And I would say if that makes you happy, be happy where you are. Right. Like do, do but if you, if you want more, if it's like, Hey, you know what? I think I could do a little bit better or maybe I want to help my family more. Or I want to retire mom and dad or whatever this, whatever it is that drives you, mm -hmm. then, then take the appropriate necessary steps. A lot of times you aren't working with the correct infrastructure. Um, and so infrastructure is really important to lay out before you start bringing building materials to the site, oh, right? Yeah. That's just the key. Build infrastructure because infrastructure is the scaffolding. It's what's going to create the skeleton of your operation. And if you don't have a skeleton, you don't have a body. And, and so I think you absolutely need to focus on infrastructure and that would be systemizing. That would be really understanding the, the nuances of your business where things get stuck is where you should pour resources in, right? So if you get stuck in transaction coordinating, hire a transaction coordinator so you can go out and get more deals. If you're getting stuck at dispositions, um, maybe you need to hire a dispo manager. Maybe you need to get a, a you know, leverage a Kegley or another disposition house in your market, whatever, whatever it is. Um, I would find the key pieces that you're weak at and figure out how to strengthen those. And then what you are good at that's when you double down there. So a lot of people, when they're scaling and they're growing, what they start doing is just throwing money everywhere, right? Right. Um, not necessary. You, you don't have to build everything. Uh, you have to be good at building one thing and then let the people who are good at the other things do those pieces. And so I think that's, that's key in building a successful business that doesn't make you want to, you know, bury your head in the sand every day. Because let's face it, if you are getting anxiety from your phone ringing off the hook, from all yeah. the text messages, from all the transaction coordinating, from all of the title work. If, if you get anxiety from any aspect of the business, that's a part you need to ship off. And if there's a part of the business that excites you, again, it's that same methodology I talked about earlier, right? Is do what you like doing. Yeah. What makes you feel good and comfortable because that was what you were meant for. So yeah. do more of that and then leave the other stuff for the guys who enjoy that part. Again, great advice. Two things I took from that. First and foremost, if you're comfortable doing 20K a year or 10K a year, whatever it is, it's okay. You don't have to grow. I see a little bit too much on social media where people are just growing to grow, right? I've actually called people out on that many occasions. Like, I want to go do this and that. And, and usually the same person six months ago is like, I'm doing this so I have more time with my family. And I'm like, all right, asshole. How can you have more time with your family and now you're working 80 hours a week and you just have another job? Wh which one's more important, right? So right. Um, don't, don't be confused. What, constantly ask yourself what you want out of life and what you want to do. And sometimes, sometimes it's good enough, right? And I, and I think that's important. It's, we, you know, it's, it's, you really, really have to think about that, right? Because like, it, you know, if you were, uh, it's a, this is a conversation piece I had with someone on the hotline there. Um, just the fact that you're in this conversation right now, listening to this podcast makes you different. Yeah. Right. And, and that's great because you're not listening to, you know, something else. You're not um, consuming content that's not educational. You're, you're consuming educational content on a platform that is helping you and, and your financial freedom. And, and so for that in itself, I'm, you know, congratulations because you are doing what 99% of people don't do. But don't buy into this whole, if you don't have a Benz, if you don't have a mansion, if you don't have, you know, diamonds, that you're, you're, you're useless, right? right? Which is why, Michael, doesn't matter how many Benzes I, I will have or not have, um, I am not going to make that be my character. 
right? The, you, my character will never be because of the items I have because that stuff ages, it goes away, the cars rust, the houses need repair. Yeah. All of that stuff is material. It is not the contents of your character. It is not what makes you a man. It is not what makes you a woman. It's not what makes you human. Yeah. What makes you human is the fact that we are here to serve each other, that we are here to help each other. And if you can find your place in service, then the rewards of that service are naturally bound to you. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with that more. Um, that, if I could give you a standing ovation right now, I would. Uh, that, that was so well said. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank and then the other thing that you really talked about is, okay, if, if, you're, if you are to the point where you want to add gasoline, that is an okay answer. It's perfectly okay. But you said, find out what you're good at and love to do. And basically outsource, that wasn't your word, but find others to do this stuff and make sure that's the thing they want to do, right? Make sure like you have, compliment yourself with people that you both like and enjoy, but are also good at things you're not good at. Of course, of course. I mean, I'm, I, uh, if without Hunter and Josiah, I, you know, this doesn't happen, right? Keekly doesn't exist. Exactly. Um, without them, you know, I was asked on a podcast this morning, who, you know, how did you come up with franchises? And I'm like, I didn't. That wasn't <laughs> my idea. That was Josiah, right? It was, it was all Josiah. Josiah came up with that, um, you know, and it was because he is constantly looking at what it looks like to expand. I am very, very focused on what I do. And I, and I pour my heart, soul, and energy in the things that I'm doing. And he's doing the same. He, he is definitely, uh, he's stewarding the ship. And I am happy to have that captain at the helm. You know? That's awesome. So the next, the next one we'll talk about is when do you go, you know, let's assume you've dominated your local market, right? So we started with nothing. Then you did a couple of deals. Let's assume you are the man or the woman in your market, your city, whatever that is. When do you think it's a good idea for someone to consider I don't know, let's call it out of state for lack of a better term, right? To, to go get another market. Um, I that think, has to be a hard choice. If, it, it does. And you got to look at it like, if, if, is there anything left for you in your market? Like, is there other ways for you to monetize mm. uh, where you are already? Opening a new market isn't easy. No. And it's that, expensive and, 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 uh, and it could fail, right? And, it, and it, could take the, it could take the gas out of, what you're already doing, what your core competency is. And you know, so my, my suggestion is if you have that thought, if you're like, I'm in this market right now, we're crushing it in this market, doing a beautiful job, um, but you want more, you want growth, and that's something that is, is in, internally important for you, mm -hmm. then find the growth, right? And that um, growth could be in your backyard. It could very well be in your backyard. I mean. Um, for wholesalers, you know, look, my, my brother Pace, uh, a lot of folks have been leaving a lot of leads just sitting there on the, on the tree um, because they didn't know how to deal with a zero equity deal or, right. excuse me, a negative equity situation. Um, there are so many deals to be had through creative financing and through um, using, you know, that asset as a, as, as a wholesalable product um, that you could, you could double your wholesale revenue you could double your deal transactions uh, volume by adding a new type of transaction type to your portfolio. So I would say it's, it's not really about going out and opening a new market. Um, mainly take a look at the one you're in right now and double down on it and see where you're leaving fruit. Yeah. I think, again, that's great advice, not advice you would hear from most, most leaders there. Most leaders who go bigger is better, you know, step up, be a man, go for it, blah, 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 blah. And, First off, you're, you're taking resources, both time and money from your, what's working into other areas. And oh, by the way, you might be the big fish in your neck of the woods because you've lived there for 30 years or 40 years or 50 right. years. You know it cold. You step into someone else's backyard, you're the small fish no matter how much money you have, right? You don't know what sides of the streets and you know, who, where the gangs are. I mean, all that other nonsense that, that you now take to the core in your market, you kind of lose it. And I think too many people, Again, it's because of YouTube University. Too many people think it's easy. And I tell you, just, just like a buy and hold investor, if you step into a new market out of state, you, you are, you know, you're, you're the person at the poker table that people are going to take the money from, right? You're the sucker it's, in the room. It, you could be. You could very well be, right? You could also be the trailblazer in there that's going to wipe, you know, take, take everybody that, that do it. But that's, that, that's not very likely. You're very likely to get burnt. You're very likely to lose hands. You're very likely to, you know, to, yeah. to lose steam. Um, so, and, and again, Michael, the reason I 
say the things I say is it's coming from experience, right? Sure. I've done the things we're talking about. I've made mistakes. We, we are national, but we're national in our core competency. We were organically spreading in new markets and then we saw we were bloating. And when you bloat, that's not good, right? right? Dead people bloat, <laughs> right? So, so you don't want to bloat, right? Yeah. You want to be able to remain lean. You want to be good at your core competencies. And so it's, you strip away all that other stuff. You can still go big. You have big ideas, have big dreams but have them be attached to what you are ultimately the best at because yeah. that's your trail. And that's the one that's going to take you to the moon. That's great. That's very well said. So I'd love to switch this now to a couple of initiatives that I've seen you be a part of. You've mentioned one of them already, um, wholesale hotline. Why don't you kind of talk about what that is? Uh, I've seen a couple, it's amazing stuff, but really want you to talk about the vision and the, what you've seen in the last 17, 18 uh, episodes. So wholesale hotline is Brent Daniels, Pace Moore, being myself, um, Brent Daniels is a part of it. He brings the lead generation aspect to a TTP. Of course, you know, there's a, an army of cold callers uh, that, that are a thousand percent, um, you know, shouting from the rooftops how great Brent Daniels is and the things that he teaches them and trains. And he's real. He's a real operator doing real deals, helping real people change their destinies. And so he's a part of the show. Um, Pace Morby, for those of you who don't know, I'm sure almost everybody watching will, um, he is a, a masterful converter, right? He's, he, he's the man with the silver tongue. The guy knows how to connect and communicate with people at a level that is visceral. Yeah. And, uh, and really, um, you know, it's that, it's, it's, it's because he can speak to you um, beyond all the, the, yep. the fake. Um, he, and because he comes to you with, he's genuine and, and it's that connection from, you know, genuine person to genuine person, which I think makes him the best. And so he brings that level of honesty and genuineness to the show. And, um, you know, we don't talk a lot about creative deals on that show, but we do talk about wholesaling them. And so, um, you know, he's there as, uh, uh, there to be able to help people talk to sellers and understand how to overcome their fears in those situations or how to maneuver in those situations. And then again, uh, we have a lot of people asking about how to move their deals, who to talk to, what that process looks like. Uh, and, and I'm there as the resident disposition specialist and uh, um, also speaking to how to generate referrals to get your deals. Because as most people don't know, Keegley has a marketing budget of wow. zero. Wow. I don't send any mail. I don't have cold callers, right? So, so how do we do all these deals? And, and, and that is, that is a, that is an art, right? And so yeah. we talk a lot about that as well. Um, so the vision of the show, and I think the synergy of the three of us as personalities has, has really um, resonated with our audience. Mm -hmm. They know it's a, it's a, there's a level of honesty we bring to it that is unmatched. They know that there's authenticity in the people people and the things that we say we're not selling anything on the show so um it's an hour and a half of just free content pure pouring into the community and you'll never be pitched anything we're not we're not there to get your dollars we're there to get your hearts mm -hmm. and uh um we're there to change your lives right that's it and that's the that's the beauty of that and uh it's it's become a phenomenal uh, uh show we have viewership which has just blown my mind i mean you, we can get anywhere from 15 to 20,000 people watch an episode on a, in a weekly basis, which for, you know, for three guys doing wholesale <laughs> deals in Phoenix, Arizona is in, intense. Right. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm enjoying that process quite, quite honestly. It's, it's, it's so fun. And then, and Jamil I, and, you know, we're, we're actually only on episode 15. Yeah. Um, but you know, in 15 episodes, it's like, wow, look at where, look at where we've gone. And what happens at episode 52? Yeah. You know, where will we be then? Yeah. Where yeah. can people find the library of the first 15 shows? So the library of the first 15 shows are available now on iTunes. So we are an official podcast. You can watch or listen to download the entire library on iTunes or Spotify and take us with you. If you're driving and you're, or you're walking or you're driving for dollars or walking for dollars or at your job, um, you know, driving truck or doing whatever you do all day and uh, you don't want to listen to mindless music, um, 
download us and put us in your ears and, and we'll be there to pour into you. Uh, if you want to see us live because we're handsome people, you can <laughs> catch us on Brent Daniels, uh, on Brent Daniels YouTube channel. That's and awesome. he has the live video version of all those episodes there. <laughs> and you're awesome. So the other thing I wanted to ask you about was, you know, we, we, I, I first met you in Texas uh, at an event in Texas and then uh, met you in Fresno at the hub. Uh, you and uh, Pace were doing something called Pace and Jamil do America. Why don't you talk about the vision for what that was? Obviously this health event got in the middle of that journey, but you, you had visited five or six locations if I recall before having to shelve that idea for a little while. Yeah, it was, you know, really just about how we collaborate and, uh, and how the two of us as, as competitors, because we are our competitors, um, had really shifted the mindset of, of that value system and, uh, and, and poured into each other's businesses to help each other grow. Um, I think that a lot of times the, the mentality in entrepreneurship is, is let's show up to the battlefield with all the guns and knives and let's slaughter everybody on our way to the other side. And, um, you know, it look, I, I, nothing against the man. I love Grant Cardone. I think he's, I think he's an interesting character to watch and he's obviously very successful. Um, but he does have a very, um, combative approach, right? It's like killer be kill dog eat dog. Um, you know, I'm not leaving anybody behind. It's, it's me to the end. And, and you know what? Fair. That's, 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 you're entitled to that experience. Mm -hmm. The problem with that is you end up winning alone. Yeah. And, uh, I'm not interested in that. I think that the reason that I have the platform and the voice that I have is because the message that Pace and I have preached and what we were doing across America was hold hands across the line. You can start where you are and you are much greater and much stronger if you are all together in a group working um, with the mentality or the spirit of squatting up, right? And if you have that in your spirit and if you have that as the impetus that drives you, then when you're down, your brother's not or your sister's not and they're there to push you up. Mm -hmm. And and having having the camaraderie and having cooperative uh, aspects and, and looking out for each other and not trying to cheat each other and not lying to each other and, and not going behind each other's back trying to steal each other's deals and, and being good people and, and helping each other and caring about each other's profits and not always watching other people's plates but being happy with what's on yours yeah. and, and, and celebrating the dishes that other people are eating at the same time. It's a magical way to live. And that energy creates an abundance that is beyond uh, what I think the combative approach is. And I think that the reason we have the platform we have and why Pace and I had such, such success in a short amount of time uh, with that tour was that message resonates with people at, at the core of their being. Because at, in the end of the day, um, all of us are good people. We're, we're all well, souls. Most of us are good people at the core. Even, even, <laughs> even the ones that are bad, Michael, I can tell you, um, are, can transform. Like all, it's, all it is is a mindset. And, yeah. and it, all they have to do is recontextualize the way they look at the world. Truth. Um, and if they could start seeing things from a higher, better way, uh, they would change that. And, and we're, all, we're all human beings. And you know, uh, let's, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I've been this way my whole life. I've, I've, I've had to survive. Yeah. I've been combative. I've, I've been the guy who said, bring all the guns and knives to the battle and let's go. Right. And I'm leaving no man behind. And it didn't get me anywhere. It got me, it got me alone and it got me sad and it, and it didn't help me. So yeah. um, it's, this is just a retool. Yeah. Well, one of the things I, I don't know if you've really, I don't know if you had time to see this, but you came to Fresno and gave that talk that evening. God, was that four months ago? Roughly yeah. five months. Yeah. Four or five months ago. Well, and I don't know if anybody's, honest. anybody's had the, anybody's followed up with and told you, but that talk you and Pace gave and that message of going together with your brother and sister, even though you are competitors, as you said, it's transformed 80% of the, the wholesalers and flippers in Fresno, at Isn't least that just that one talk. Um, so you should feel really good about that. Um, That's amazing. Yeah. Like that, like Michael, you just made all the, the hair <laughs> on my arm stand up because like, that's why, that's what it's all about. Right. Yeah. Um, it's like you, you can tune people into a different frequency. It doesn't matter what they walked in with. It's like the strength of that frequency is so 
so good and it's so strong and it's so uplifting that it, you know everyone elevated right and you said 80 percent of the people have have joined that that yeah. path and are singing that tune yeah and, and are vibrating at that frequency and man that is yeah that, and, that and they're holding it. yeah they're holding that through this health event it would have been easy to say that if they if the economy stayed the same and everybody was still killing it i'm here to tell you they're holding it through a health event where everybody's businesses have been hit a little bit um you know and and that th frankly if you can hold it through a bad time it's just going to scream in a good time uh Beautiful. so so congratulations i plan to to kick that off again in august so he's he's going uh, uh, he's traveling with his wife for a little while around the country helping his sub two students in an rv and uh <laughs> I, you know i think they're gonna have a good time doing that i might pop into different cities and meet them uh, and we might speak to people, but I, I don't know yet if crowds are still, yeah. um, you know, if people are really feeling crowds in, today, but you know, who knows what it's going to look like in August. So, well, you um, know what, again, I've seen both of you now uh, in person and on, uh, in video, you guys might be passionate enough to get that tuning fork out to do a, you know, a, a live event, like a, a Zoom event or a Facebook live event at various cities. You might just be good enough to do that. Uh, it's harder. You know, uh, yeah, it's tough. You can't it's see tough. the interaction, but I think you two could do it. it you may not hit everybody, but you're going to, you guys just, you changed highly competitive individuals to see the value in potentially going arm in arm. That's hard to do. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. So the last thing I wanted to close on is you put out an Instagram post today about mindset. So mindset, clearly you've mentioned it a couple of times throughout this, but I, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you to talk about that last Instagram post and why mindset is so important to you. Well, um, you know, mindset's important to me because uh, a little bit about what we we're talking about earlier, it's about the context, right? Who are you in your story? Um, are you, are you walking into every interaction as the hero of that interaction or the villain? Mm. You know, when you're talking to a seller, who are you to that seller? Are you their hero or are you their villain? Are you the guy who came and took advantage of them and, and left them high and dry or canceled on them or lied to them or cheated them? Or, or, or were you the hero who came and saved the day? Yes, you were paid and made some money, but you like changed the, the, their situation and brought value. And how you view yourself is how you are going to interact with people. And, and that post today, I'm actually dropping a YouTube video uh, probably this afternoon, um, maybe tomorrow morning, depending on how many comments I have by the time we're done this podcast. But because I love to hold my audience hostage with my content, I, I make them interact with me uh, so that I know that they want it. And then when they want it, they got it. Right. Nice. So um, the facts are, is that uh, I truly believe that we all walk into every situation with an idea of who we are. Right. And, 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 and if you want to know who you are, like, think of when you watch movies, who have you gravitated to, right? Do you watch the movie and or do you cheer for the villain or do you cheer for the good guy? Right? Like who, who, who are you? Who are you in every, when, when you are on the phone, um, are you high-fiving people because you got them in, in a circle and you, and you played all mind tricks with them and you've been able, you undressed them to the point where you got the contract at a, in a shady way? Think, dude, you're the villain, right? That's what you are, and that's okay. Then be the best one possible. Yeah, Get out there, and, villain, and, yeah, because yeah, whatever you're doing, it matters, right? Your mindset matters. So be the best of it as possible. I choose, I choose to to tell myself that in every situation, I want to walk in and I want to be helpful. I want to be the hero in every situation I can possibly be, and I bring that into my heart. And in that, because my mind is letting that frequency out. My heart is putting out that frequency. My actions and, my, and, and everything that I'm doing that follow behind it will show that exact frequency, that exact intention. And, and, and just in that, you will change everybody that you interact with. I think that's so well said. So let's, let's wrap it up. How can people, if somebody wanted to go check out your Instagram page and, and correspond on the mindset post, where would they go find you? Again, at J Damji, at J D A M J I. I'm on YouTube now. Uh, I, I was resistant to a YouTube channel because I was like, oh my God, I have to do this all over again. Um, but uh, I'm on YouTube and I'm having a good time. Wow. Uh, 
people have have been you know coming and subscribing to my channel so subscribe to my youtube channel it's jamil damji j-a-m-i-l d-a-m-j-i on youtube and i put out my content there i'm going to shift from putting out my free content from instagram to youtube so that i can build more of a following there uh it's just evergreen and i feel like i can interact with people a little bit um you know more robustly from a youtube platform than i can uh just through a picture and a, or a one minute video on Instagram. Yeah. So uh, really enjoying that platform. And, and I want all of you guys, if you are, if I resonate with you, if I'm a person that you think um, is, is in your, uh, you know, sphere or, or if, if anything I've said has touched you in, in a way that makes sense or feels right, then follow me in my journey and I'll follow you back. And let's, uh, let's, let's see how we can all grow together. There you go. Well, folks, just so you know, it'll be the first two lines of the description of this video. Line one will be his Instagram page and line two will be his YouTube page. If you just want to look at the description, it will be their first two lines. Jamil, thank you very much for doing this, man. Uh, you gave, like I said, very early on, some of the nuggets, some of the information you gave is the best answers I've heard in the two years of doing this. So uh, thank you very much. Michael, thank you for having me. Again, uh, sometimes the... Uh, you know, if, if I'd gotten on this show, you know, maybe six weeks ago, I wouldn't have had the same insights and everything is perfectly timed. You got uh, it. So I'm, I'm, I'm super happy that we're sitting with each other today. Say hi to your lovely wife and, uh, um, you know, pet those beautiful dogs for me as well. And, and you know, the next time in Fresno, uh, I want to hang out with you guys again. You got it, Jamil. Thanks, buddy. Take care of yourself. Take care, brother.